then that anything is possible with hard work. And I want you to know that no matter what happens along the way, you should always believe that because it's true. Obviously, we didn't win the election today, but I stand here with my head held high. In the Chicago mayoral election, Lori Lightfoot failed to make it to the runoff, becoming the first Chicago mayor in 40 years to lose re-election. Lightfoot, a black queer woman, took office with high expectations after she was elected in 2019 on a progressive platform. But her handling of COVID-19 and social unrest after George Floyd caused progressives to become disillusioned with her, most notably for her reaction to the 2022 teacher strike, in which she told teachers who were concerned about COVID safety to get real and get back to class in person. Chicago also experienced a spike in crime during her term, similar to the rest of the country, which made her vulnerable to attacks from the right. As Ross Barkan points out in The New Yorker, Lightfoot alienated just about every ideological faction in Chicago. Left-leaning organizations and local leaders viewed the mayor with increasing skepticism, portraying her as a pro-police neoliberal. She managed to feud almost equally with two influential unions that hold starkly different political views, the Chicago Teachers Union, which is left-wing, and the city's police union, the Fraternal Order of Police, which is headed by a proud Donald Trump supporter. The police order endorsed Paul Vallis, who centered his campaign on crime, with the teachers' union backing progressive Brandon Johnson. Those two candidates won the most votes yesterday and will advance to the runoff next month. And Brandon Johnson joins me now. Um, congratulations. Um, this was a, an historic shift uh, that normally it doesn't the way, this isn't the way it goes. Uh, but you are now one of two people who's going to go into the runoff. Very quickly, what do you think the disillusionment with Lori Light, but was mainly about. Yeah, thanks for having me tonight, Joy. You know, look, I started my um, professional career as a public school teacher here in the city of Chicago, uh, teaching seventh and eighth graders. It's still the best job that I've ever had, uh, teaching in uh, Cabrini Green, USA, uh, a neighborhood and community that I believe people around the country will be familiar with. And um, mm -hmm. as I've worked to become an organizer in the city of Chicago, pushing for education justice and fighting for workers' rights, um, you know, Mayor Lori Lightfoot four years ago made history by embracing the very movement um, that uh, made her election and candidacy possible. And then, unfortunately, she was a disappointment because she abandoned all of the progressive um, um, promises that she made. And clearly, the city of Chicago is uh, ready to turn the page uh, yeah. on her and actually connect to someone who is def definitely uh, tethered to the movement. The, the way that this race played out, I mean, there were six African-American candidates, including yourself. There was Chuy Garcia, who a lot of people sort of remember. He was the one Latino candidate, and there was the one white candidate, uh, Mr. Vallis. It is you and Vallis who will now go head to head. Crime is a major issue um, on, at, at least according to the reporting, right, of, of what people were thinking about. You have a lot of African-American middle-class folks moving out of Chicago due to things like, you know, uh, discrimination, um, uh, law and order issues, um, you know, multiple issues causing people to leave. Um, and then you also have a lot of, you know, white Chicagoans who are complaining about crime. The, the, but the, the, the crime rate increase, it's not even across communities. It's not evil, e mm -hmm. even across racial communities. Your campaign has said that your tack on that is to cut $150 million from the police budget, tax the rich for a billion dollars in new spending on schools, transportation, health care, mental health, and job creation. That is your campaign platform. Paul Vallis, who the Fraternal Order of Police is backing, his tack is to call it an utter breakdown of law and order, and his whole campaign is about taking back our city. He plans to take the handcuffs off police officers to stop raising criminals. That sends a, an alarm bell in, I think, a lot of black folks' heads. But your thoughts on that? Yeah, look, public safety is um, top of mind of many people. Uh, my wife and I were raising our three ch children on the west side of Chicago in the uh, dynamic neighborhood of the Austin community, uh, one of the largest concentration of black folks around the country. And though we love our community, it is one of the more uh, violent neighborhoods in the entire city of Chicago. And so um, we experienced this firsthand, raising three children there. And so um, between me and my opponent, um, no one has a greater incentive for the city of Chicago to be safe um, than someone who is raising a family under those circumstances. Look, the bottom line is, is that Paul Vallis um, in the 90s was in charge of the budget of the Chicago Public Schools and had budgetary um, uh, leadership within the city government. And we are in the economic uh, crisis that we are experiencing right now because of um, his failures. In fact, I was in high school at the time in which um, he blew the budget, but he did it in Philadelphia. 
Um, he did it in New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina, shutting down schools, um, uh, the loss of black educators under his uh, reign. Um, he's been an absolute nightmare. But this is someone who was also identified uh, with the extreme right wing. Um, once President Obama, uh, the first black president, was elected, um, he said he identified more as a Republican. Uh, he said he was fundamentally opposed uh, to reproductive rights and abortion. Um, here's someone who has been embraced by leadership um, that has been supportive of the January 6th um, insurrection. So um, he certainly uh, represents the most extreme aspect of the political dynamic in this in, throughout the country. I, on the other hand, um, I'm doing what works. Um, the safest cities in America all have one thing in common, Joy, and what that is is they invest in people. And so what my budget plan does, which is balanced, I'm the only person who actually released one, um, having passed multi-billion dollar budgets on the county board, um, we get at the root causes of, of violence in the city of Chicago while also dealing with the immediate crisis. And we do that by promoting uh, rank-and-file members to become detectives, 200 more, we do it by spending to make sure that the consent decree that this administration has ignored um, is um, administered with all due expediency. But we also make sure that we hire young people. Um, there's a great predictor of violence reduction throughout the country. Young people working um, is the greatest predictor to drive down violence. And so that's what my plan is committed to doing. It's ultimately a plan that invests in people because that's what safe American cities do all over the country. And I know that as a teacher, as an organizer, and of course now as a Cook County Commissioner. And do you, are you concerned that this sort of breakdown over the crime issue will become as sort of racially an, uh, polarized in an ugly way as it has in other cities during the campaign? Well, well, there's certainly been a whole lot of dog whistling here. And so, yeah. you know, look, you know, you know, painting um, a public school teacher, um, you know, in a certain light is something that, of course, that the, you know, extreme right wing, of course, has embraced. But as a progressive Democrat, um, I'm mm -hmm. definitely committed to making sure that we're doing we do what works. And, you know, again, um, investing in lives and young people is the best thing that we can do, making sure that we are providing mental health yeah. services to deal with the trauma around uh, the city of Chicago. That's what I'm committed mm -hmm. to doing. All right. Well, we wish you luck. Uh, please come back. Chicago mayoral candidate Brandon Johnson, thank you. And we should note we did invite candidate Paul Vallis on the show as well. We look forward to talking to him. Thank you.